Welcome to round one, or Bienvenue à Premier Tour. I probably butchered that, but this is where we show you just the beginning of a game to give you a taste of what it's like. And taste you will, because today we're playing Dinner in Paris, the two to four player game from Funny Fox, who helped sponsor this video. In the game, we'll be restaurant owners seizing opportunity in a popular district of Paris, hoping to lure both Parisians and tourists alike. Each player will open a variety of restaurants, gaining income in order to expand their reach into the square with their terrace tiles. We'll score points with each new opening by building more and more terraces, competing for majorities, and completing various objectives. You'll see every move we make and then join us as we discuss who is the best restaurateur in Paris. Welcome to the table. We have it set up right here. And is everyone ready for our dinner in Paris? I'm ready to eat dinner in Paris. I'm ready to sure. travel somewhere. So has, let's uh, go to yes. Paris. Has right? anyone ever been to Paris? I have no. not. No? You? No, my dad's been there a bunch and he tells he tells me a lot about it. He, Disney's Paris food at Epcot is apparently just that, as good. That Paris I've been to. I've been yeah. to that Paris. It's <laughs> not the same Paris. <laughs> anyone in France watching this, we We're apologize really sorry. for that <laughs> statement. Um, has anyone had dinner before? That I've had. I've had okay. food. So we're halfway there. In this game, we're going to be not only just having dinner in Paris, but we're going to be opening restaurants. We're going to be building terraces out away from those restaurants. And as a game itself, we're going to be doing that and trying to build in towards the center of the board and scoring points along the way, doing a number of different things. Yeah, this is very much a spatial game. We have tiles. These are going to represent the terraces. We have four different rows on our board. Each of them are going to be occupied by very specific types of restaurants with like uh, creperies and pizzerias and grills and other uh, French names I can't <laughs> quite pronounce, but uh, that's not the point. What we're going to be doing is collecting these buildings, building them around the outside edge. That's because we're playing in a four player game and then building those terraces. And just as you said, and to do so, we need to open these restaurants with the right set of ingredients. Each of us is gonna start the game with four ingredients that are randomly uh, given out to each of us. We also have some more cards up here which represent either dollars or ingredients that we can use. This is an action game where on our turn, we're going to get three actions. The very first action is mandatory. We're gonna to have to draw a card. When you draw a card, it's from one of those four cards or from the top of the deck. And then you have two other actions, and they can be the same action. So I could draw two more cards for a total of three actions, or I can take one of the other three types of actions in the game. Those are typically building one of these buildings for the right sign of the uh, right type of ingredients, or building terraces onto the board where I have restaurants that are mine, or completing objectives. Each of us drew two secret objectives at the start of the game, and we kept one of them face down in front of us and put the other one here that we could try to complete. So you could also try to complete this objective in your hand or one of these four that are up here. All these things are gonna give you points. All of them are gonna give you income in order to power your future turns. And we're gonna be doing that until one of three end game conditions are met. Yeah, there's a few things that can end the game. One is there's 18 of these restaurants here. In a four player game, if we build 15 of those, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Also, if we've not had any more spaces along that outside edge for restaurants to be opened, that's gonna trigger the end of the game. Because when you build a restaurant, you don't have to build it adjacent to another restaurant. You can leave little gaps if you wanna be a jerk. Uh, and I'm sure we will do that in this game. Uh, what is the third way to yeah, finish the, the, the game? Yeah, the final way is, as I already mentioned, you have four rows on your board. If any player completes two of those rows, meaning these two or Ooh. these two or any combination of them, that's also going to trigger the end of the game. You're going to finish out the rounds. Whoever the start player is, being me in this game, uh, we will finish with David if I was able to complete that. That's going to be tricky to do. <laughs> it's Uncover yeah. two we'll of see. those. So the way we're going to structure this is we're going to play uh, maybe the first couple rounds yeah. just to show you how the game plays, and then we're going to break away and then come back in when the build and the board is more built out so you have an idea of what we're doing and then we'll finish the game off camera and come back and talk about our experience so let's start yeah on my turn i have got my four ingredient cards and the very first thing i have to do is i have to draw a card so i will take this meat here mm, and i think I he's got his eye on a certain type of restaurant immediately replace it there's a couple that need meat actually and i get two more actions so i think action number one will be to draw another card so i will take this oh boy potatoes. you got the meat and the potatoes and then one more action 
I think I will take this. Yeah, oh, wow. that's a nice card. So that is my whole turn. I used my entire turn to build up. The reason is probably I'm going to try to build one of these larger restaurants because I know no one has one, two, three, four, five, six, all seven ingredients to do anything right now. And you can only have seven cards yep, in your hand, so, so I'm sitting he on has seven. the max. That, that's that's me. Oh man, if you have what you need to build that in the next round. I don't know. I, I'll try to count and see if I do. All right. <laughs> I'm All right, a little Kira. short, so I'll need some help. Can I have the one? This coin? one? Nope, the one coin. Oh, the one coin. Yeah. Now the coins are a little different. They're going to be used when you're building terraces. You're going to be able to discard those to increase your income at a oh, certain yeah. point. I guess I just keep it in my hand. Um, uh, can you refill that? I will. Thank you. Um, all right, so there's not really any way to get money right off the bat you is can there? draw always from the top of the deck and it might be money it might well, but be. the money is only for terraces yes the money will be in your hand and you'll add it to your income if you want to discard it to sort of temporarily give you a little boost to build more terraces i see um i guess i'll just draw i'll take the one with three things on it some some options yep it's nice to have options and i will go ahead and Build? Ooh, lobster. Ooh. I'll take it. Why not? That's fancy. Oh, you're drawing cards too. Everyone's drawing cards. Everyone's playing it safe. I wanted to so build far. something, but I need money, and all right, I don't have any. So, I need one. So I'll take the potatoes. Okay. So that's my first action or my draw. There you mm -hmm. go. Now I need to take two actions. So my first action is going to be to get the pasta. That's down on the end. Okay. The cheese? Or is it's that cheese? cheese. It's oh, it cheese. Looks like, it looks like pasta to me. Oh, cheese. You must be hungry. I am very hungry <laughs> playing this game. There's and a fair amount of food going on My here. second action, I'm going to build a building. All right. What kind of building? I'm going to build a brasserie. So I have really? everything I need. So I need potatoes. I need uh, salad. I need or tomatoes, cheese. Meat? Meat and a breadstick. Whoa. Which I have. So I'm going to discard all of those there. Now you can take a brasserie. How big is the brasserie? It is oh, this that's one, one of the it's big ones. Big one I would be rich if all if I needed was those ingredients right to build something. I build lots of Where are you going? Going right there. Okay. And I will put this there to denote that it is yours. Mine, and I gain uh, three income from doing that. So my yep. income is now four. So I could build some terraces, but I already used both my actions. That's pretty good. You had a good first hand for sure. I was a, it's about seeing what kind of combinations you can make out on the board, you know? So before I go, I want to point out a couple things about Ryan's turn. He could place this anywhere outside on this outside edge. Why you're going to give that some thought is you're going to want to build in here. And depending on some of the scoring opportunities we have in this game, you're going to want to potentially build some of your terraces ultimately around maybe some lamp posts some flower beds, I think, is which is the case yeah, in this game. Yeah, let's talk about that. So no one has an unfair advantage. So <laughs> people are going to get points for flower beds, having the most terraces around these two structures, around the lampposts, and there's two lampposts, and then also having the most terraces on this side of the board. So Ryan thought about all of those, and the scoring structure is right here. So in a four-player game, it's 12, 8, 4, 0 points, depending upon your place in that standing. So. All right. Well, I'm going to do something maybe a little bit more basic. Uh, but I am going to draw... Open a Starbucks. <laughs> Open Where's the coffee? Where's I'm going to draw this potato card as my first action. Now I have got two more actions. I am not drawing another card. I think they card. just have cafes. Oh, yeah. Cafes. Yeah, that's, that's on the Starbucks true. side. So I'm going to play these two potatoes for my second action to build a restaurant. But I'm going to be building one of these little... Three three. Three three. three, three. three, three. Uh, although they, they, they picture French fries, but is that really a French for food? It's a fast food yeah. restaurant. Oh, basically. Okay. Look at you. So I'm going to build this uh, right here. Smart. And that was my second action. Free I'm going to take one of my freeries and put it on top there. Yep. These buildings are pretty cool, actually. Yeah. They're um, really and then for my next action, I am going to build some terraces. So I only have one. In actually, wait. Yes, yep. I only have one income because the freedery is not going to give me any increased income. Right. I have one, but I'm going to play these other two cards as well. And I'm going to build terraces in front of my freedery. So I'm spending a total of three, which lets me remove three terraces. Oh, boy. Nice. And build them in front. Now, the first one has to go in front of the restaurant. Yep. And then I can continue building out. There are some rules that will come into play when we come back mid-game that we'll kind of explain. But for right now, 
Actually, you know what? I'm going to build it in front of that side. Can't see very well. Mm -hmm. And there. And then on top of this pigeon. Now, pigeons are one of the only things on the board that you can build on top of. Because when you do, you get to take a pigeon card. And this is going to give me either a instant sort of action where I would reveal it and I would do the thing, or it has an hourglass on it, which this one does, which gives me a power that I can implement whenever I see fit or when it makes sense. So that is my turn. I've got a pigeon card. What does nice. everyone else have? I don't know. Don't have a pigeon card. <laughs> don't have anything. All right, so it's my turn. So the very first action I have to take is I have to draw a card. I think I will take this dollar yep. and replace. Now I get two other actions. So I'm going to build the gastronomique. Ooh. So that's a potato, some tomatoes, mm -hmm. some cheese, some meat, some breadsticks, some flour, and some crab. Holy cow. So Very nice. Those all go to the discard, Ryan. There's only one of those that can even be built in the game. Yep. So I'll take this along with my gastronomic. Anyone know what that is? Is it just like a five-star fancy yeah. restaurant? Yeah, like, like a fancy restaurant. Where they do that gastronomy. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm Gastro stuff. has to do with your stomach anyway. Yeah. I'm going to completely give up my ability to go anywhere near Ryan or David because I oh, don't want to be, be blocked right off. by that flower bed. I am going to be uh, near the flower bed. So that's my second action, yep. my third action, and that's going to give me four coins. So one, two, three, four. So I'm up to five now. Nice. Plus 12 points at the end of the game. Yeah. yeah. And, but th they're more expensive to build. So I will build for $4. So you're going to use this white tracking cube. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, down to that, and build this, which is immediately going to give me one more income. So I go up to six. I'm going to place this right here. All right, so again, I drew a card for my mandatory action. I built a restaurant for my second action, and I built as many terraces as I wanted, but they're $4, and I don't have any more money to spend. So I'm just going to remove this because it's just a temporary thing. Your yellow marker never moves in the game. It's, it shows you exactly how much income you have at the start of every one of your turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, you did quite a bit. We've actually... That was well done. For a guy who just collected cards in the first round, it's a good thing your second turn was... As solid as that. Okay. Here you go. So I have to draw a card. Uh, what do you want? Draw the meat and potato one. You got oh, the Jeremy's, flower. Built, flower. Jeremy's built a restaurant to block our card dragging. <laughs> That's true. <Right. laughs> yep. I'm going to build a pizzeria. Ooh. Pizzeria. Ooh. Yeah. Two tomatoes and a flower. Two tomatoes. Just to verify, two tomatoes and a flower. Where do you want to go, Kira? Uh, pizzeria. Here Can you hand me a front pizzeria? Of that flower bed. Right, right here. here. Yep. Just straight up in front of it. Yep. All right, so there's the your pizza. So that gives me a single income. That's your second action. Right? Yep. Uh, yes, you're going to be at two now. Pizza, yep. yeah, yeah. And then I will... You can draw a card. You can actually build one of them for $2. Um, now, one of the things you guys may or may not be able to see, I'm sure we can throw it up on the screen, is the more terraces you build in these rows, the more points they give you, depending on how far you built out. So if you're looking at my board here at the very bottom, I can get up to 34 points if I can build all these. I don't know if it'll and that's, happen. That's the key of that's, build, that's the fight. building yeah. that early. You're the only person who's going to have that building, so no one else is really going to be building off of that. Um, oh, you have the brasserie. I yep. do. Don't forget about that. Don't count me out. Oh, yes, that's true. It's just not worth as many points. I will go ahead and draw blind draw. Blind draw. That is your third action. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Ryan. Yes. I, will... I, I, I sense collecting of cards in your future. Well, I have to draw a card, period. So I'm thinking, let's grab the flower. The flower it is. And let's see what comes up to two more actions. Mm, I get, yes, two more actions. Do I want the breadstick? I definitely want to build... Um, out from my terrace. So I have four. I'm going to spend the four to put out one of these. I'm going to place it right here. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give me one income. So I have five income. Technically, I have one income left to spend, but I have no fruitery. So it doesn't do me any good. Yeah, you actually don't get this income oh, until on next this turn. turn. Yep. So how about just a sack of potatoes for my second action? You got it. A sack of potatoes. Yeah, give me that sack of potatoes. So as quick as that was, we're going to come back in a few minutes. 
you've gotten a sense of what you do on your turn, the actions you can take. The only thing we haven't done of the actions is to uh, complete, complete an objective yeah. card, which is a little early in the game for doing that, but I'm sure we'll get to that momentarily. We're going to come back about midway through the game. You're going to see a very, very different board, and hopefully we can explain a little bit more about the rules with building terraces. Welcome back. We have made some progress uh, a little faster than we thought, uh, and I do want to apologize. We didn't finish the second round with me, uh, and I had this awesome, awesome turn that I will detail for you right now. I did use the pigeon card that I happened to pick up in the first uh, turn that I took, because uh, I was able to use that pigeon card and build this, how do you pronounce this, Kira? Beravin? Beravin, yeah, Bar probably, I don't know, I'm guessing. Uh, for one fewer ingredient. So I didn't have all the ingredients that I needed, but I played that pigeon card, I was able to build that on my turn. And then we've played a few more, a few things have happened. As you can see, there's a lot more restaurants that have been opened, and there's terraces all over the place. Ryan was able to build this giant block of terraces and complete a number of different objective cards that had different shapes for terraces. Jeremy uh, was able to use a pigeon card of his own to build terraces and break some rules. One of the rules is you can't build terraces adjacent to another restaurant or another player's terrace. Jeremy had a card that allowed him to do that, and not only that, but to cover up two of their terraces with his. So he built on top of Ryan's right here and made it a little, quite a bit more difficult for Ryan to even build many terraces. Quite, quite a bit I, I did check with the zoning of Paris to make sure that was legal, Good. and they said it was okay. Did they? How did they say it Ryan, in French? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even want to go there. I don't know. I'm not even going to try it. What were you about, about to say, about Ryan? There's uh, no seating left for my brasserie. I gotta. You can build to the right. I gotta you build some more seating out there. You've got you're options. Good. You're Everyone's good. going to my fast food restaurant. That's where all the seating is. People are working on their this flower objective. Kira's yep. got some here. Uh, Ryan and Jeremy's got a couple here. Oh, Jeremy's got one. Yeah. And Jeremy's trying to reach out here as much as possible. And well, how many pigeon cards do you have now? Just one in uh, your just hand. Just one. Uh, just one uh, in my hand. Yeah. The pigeon cards can be very interesting mm -hmm. and let you bend and break the rules uh, when people least expect it. So we're going to pick up with me right now. We're going to play two more times around the table and then we'll bring it back and tell you about the entire experience. So on my next turn, I am going to start by drawing a card. I will draw this baguette Boop. Yep. Uh, as my first action. I'm going to say bag ends. Say as baguette. my second action. Oh, we did bring or the cards in. down here. Just so you know. Uh, these are not where the cards go, but we're going to leave them here. It's a little easier for us. A little easier yeah. for us to grab. Uh, second action, I am going to build a restaurant because I'm going to try to grab as many restaurant points as I can. I've got these two crabs nice. and the baguette to build the last... Fruit de mer. Fruit de mer. Where are you going? Where are you, uh, you, you going to build mm. it? <laughs> I've got this. I'm going to build it over here. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a bold move. Easy. It's a bold move, Con. It is a bold move, but I'm going to do it. Uh, and then for my last, oh yeah, through the mirror. And then for my last thing, I am going to build uh, some terraces with my last. And don't action. forget, the fruit de mer is going to move you up one on the income track. Oh, thank you very much. So I've got six, and potentially seven, uh, because I've got a card here that could uh, add to that. Mm -hmm. So with six, uh, that's two for the fruit de mer. Um, I will build. Uh, the three of them. I'll build three of those, right there. While I while I still can. One. I'm running out of space. That's for sure. Two. You need one of those pigeon cards. I three. Do. Got a pigeon card, and I'm actually just gonna hold on to this since I can't really. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to this one, and look at my pigeon card, and that is my. That is your turn. Turn right. I drew a card. I built the restaurant and built terraces. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. done. All right. Oh, this is an actual instant card. So it says draw two resource cards. That's nice. You can draw from anywhere. Yeah. So I'm actually going to top deck it. Okay. One, two. Don't look at my resource cards, Ryan. I saw it. Right. Right. Looking at the reflection of your glasses, trying to figure <laughs> out what you got. Starting with me, draw a card. All right. I am going to build uh, terraces for my first action. So, uh, you know what? You can only do that once, right? Did you take a card? I did. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first, I'm going to build. I'm going to build a pizzeria. So the pizzeria needs two tomatoes. So it's the last pizzeria. And that's the last pizzeria. Oh. All right. Yeah, we're yeah. running out of buildings. In fact, we're getting very close to actually triggering the end of the game. There. Let's go right 
here. Okay. Oh. And now my last action, I'm going to build terraces. And don't forget your tag. Yeah, I get one coin for that because I built a... Uh, yes, my tag. Thank you. That's a pizzeria. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Now I've got $9, uh, $10 to spend. $10. $10. So I'm going to go two, four. So we're going to go... Two, four. Okay. And I've got six more to spend, so go right like that. So we're going to go one, two. Oh, coming at the flower bed from two directions. I know. He's made it his goal to block me and as complete as possible. All right. Well, he just wants that flower bed. Can you blame him? So that's my well, three actions, correct? Yep. So I drew a card, I built a pizzeria, and I built some terraces for $10. Knowing that he was going to do his best to block me in, that's why I focused my strategy on this instead of going for the flower yeah, points. Yeah, those were big. Yep. Those were big. Someone should have built next to you to stop you from that. Kira, you're taking some flour? Mm-hmm. What next? More flour? Yep. Oh, someone's looking at a crepery. I'm going to do exactly that. So, crepery. Building a crepery. Brian, can you hand us a... Yep. yep. Oh, there's no more room on Kira Row <laughs> here, so you're just going to round the corner? Probably. Although that's not going to give you, you can, much yeah, room to build room terraces. To build. It's, I'm, I really am just getting this for income, but okay. I'll probably just put it over here just because why not? Well, it's going to give you one income. Okay. Money's it? tight. Yes, yes it money is, is tight. super tight in this game. You really can't build a ton of terraces, although Jeremy, you've got ten. All Thank right. You. You're What's up, that? Ryan. All right. Not bad. Was that three actions? Mm-hmm. Do you two cards? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, give me the top of the deck, and we'll see what this top is. Top of the deck? Top of the deck. Can I look at it? I'll look at it. All right, I'm going to... Hmm, how badly do I want to just end the game, or do I want to let the game go? I say you let the game go until I want to end it. Huh. Do you get it's one like, more round, or is it the end of the game? If, I, if game I end the game now, Ooh. David gets one more turn, and that's it. Oh, whoa. All right, we finished the round, because Jeremy started... That's true. I wonder if it's in my best interest to do that. It would well, take all my actions. Well, if that's the case, actions. we're going to let you go, and then we'll come back and tell you about the <laughs> end of the game. Um, but do I really want to do that? I'm only generating six income. It's not really enough for me to do anything that I would want to do. But I could earn some points. So I'm going to cut away to Ryan thinking for a half an hour. Let's about play that Jeopardy game. music. I think it's huh? better for me just to end it, right, at this point. We don't know. I don't know. Right. What is your plan? Give me, give me the other potato. You asked. Yeah. You want the potato? Yeah, I'm okay. just gonna play. I'm gonna play two potatoes, and put out one of these. A uh, Friedery? Yeah. Where are you putting that? Let's bad put boy? it right here. Just cause. Okay. And that's it. That's 15 out of 18 buildings. So then it's just going to end with my turn. Yeah. <laughs> wow that was a yeah that was unexpected that was unexpected. Up on you a little bit well i'm gonna go ahead and take the final turn then yeah uh so oh i don't even know what i can do here to score any points but i'll do it i'll draw a card anyway i'll buy i'll draw this card money yep nope wrong oh, pile i keep drawing from the wrong pile and then so i'm gonna draw off the top of the deck please be money it is not and then I'm going to build some terraces. There we go. Uh, yep. So I've got $9. seven, eight, yeah. nine dollars. I definitely would have done that instead. And I've got the bar of in, which is going to cost me three. One, two. Oh, darn it. Not enough. I'm going to come just shy of what I need. Oh, no. Um, uh, let me see my, did I? No, I don't have a pigeon card. But I'm going to do this. One, two. Three. Can it help? Can it do something? It might. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do three. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. That's the pigeon I need. Three. Uh, give me that pigeon. It, please be the auto win card. <laughs> that's it. They found it. Oh, nice. Although this doesn't still help me, but it's an instant. Place an additional terrace on the same restaurant for free. Oh, that that's is nice. nice. Not too bad. Uh, well, it gives me some points. So I will take this one and put it right here 
All right, so that signals the end of the game. What we're going to do is we're going to turn off the cameras for a moment. We're going to calculate it, and then we will be right back to let you know who won. Because honestly, at this point, I have no idea. I don't know either. I know I didn't win. I'm pretty Make sure. Make your predictions, though. It's pretty close, it we'll seems. We'll see. We'll be right back. All right, as promised, we are right back with our scores. Um, and I'm not even going to report them because it I'm wasn't getting close used to being at the bottom of the pack. And I'm, well, I'm not quite at the bottom of the pack, but I'm sharing it with some other player at the table. Well, Jeremy, take it away. Yeah, so uh, Kira had 32. David had 35. Ryan had 45. I'm laughing because I know <laughs> Ryan's going to get mad at me. And I had 74. So it, it was quite a bit uh, of difference. There's a couple things that happened in this game. And I think on the reason why we had a card that came up that allowed me, as we already prefaced, yeah. we already said that allowed me to, yes, that yeah. one, allowed me to not only build over uh, or build next to someone else's terraces, which you typically can't do, but also to build over two of theirs when I was building. So the moment I drew this card, I immediately built a free tree, which is super cheap in the game. They don't, you know, they don't have any initial costs. It only costs one to build the first couple things. Having had some income from my very large gastronomique uh, building, I had well income spent. to spend, right? So I used that income to spend on building out using this card. So effectively what I did was I used the mean element of the game where you're, you know, blocking other people out. And that's going to happen in any of these kind of games. Anytime yeah. you have a tile placement game where it's competitive on the same board and you're not building in your own little silos, you're going to have people that block you out, especially in a four-player game. So that's what happened here. And in doing so, I was able to really stretch out from that uh, free tree and do all three of these objectives with it you know build significantly it, yeah build on the uh i don't know what side that is on the west side of uh the square build around the lamppost and then also extend out in this flower bed that i thought i was going to lose to ryan so i was really able to stretch it out scoring first place in all those which was 36 points it was an enormous amount of points that i scored from that yeah i think that's something i underestimated we actually had this conversation about completing these objective cards versus going for those three objectives. And when I laid down all of those uh, squares, I could have just wrapped around and blocked off that flower garden so that no one could touch it. And I was yeah. guaranteed 12 points mm -hmm. where I said, well, I'm just going to do this instead. But at the end of the game, that was a lot of work for me to net 15 points, where if I had just come around there, that would have been 12 for me. Plus, I would have kept the 12 from you. So that I think would have been maybe the better call for me. Those are um, pretty solid points. The points yeah. you get in a four-player game, though, for being it's a top dog at those three things is pretty significant. 36 points. And Kira, I don't know about you, but I'll speak for myself. I know this is not the case with you. I just never look at those things and really soak them in. <laughs> and even if I do, here's what happens. I know that playing with all three of these guys, they're going to be going after those things fairly cutthroat. So part of me feels like I don't want to fight for the flower beds because sure. someone else is probably going to get it. So I'm going to try to find my point somewhere else. Guess what? I didn't find those points. <laughs> well, I think everyone would play this game, number one, differently the next time we play yeah. it, knowing that some of those cards exist in there. But what I was surprised of most in this game is how fast it is. Like, yeah. You guys fast. saw a lot of the game because it, <laughs> it progresses really fast. The box says, what, 40 minutes? And it's probably right. Yeah. Like This is a game that... Uh, starts off a little slow and then just kind of explodes depending upon what people are doing. Obviously, you could spend a lot of time building your terraces out, but you can also spend time getting these buildings, and these buildings give you the income to power future turns, so it's really up to you. Plus, those objectives can steer you in really weird ways. Like, these majority cards, mm -hmm. if you're not paying attention to those, you're not going to score those points, but these can change every single game, just like the objectives that you have that come out. Not only the ones you start with, but the ones that are there available when you complete your own. Yeah, another thing, too, I think we pointed this out earlier, too, in lower player count games, these buildings are going to build, be built one row in at a three player and then at a two player. And in fact, the other side of the board actually has just a two player setup oh, nice. so that it's just kind of shrunk, uh, shrunk down already. And these majority cards, there's a ton of different ones of those. So mm -hmm. it can really add a lot of variability. And like you said, or like I said, you've got to pay attention to that at the beginning of the game to see what's up, to see where you're going to at least grab some of those points. I think I got four of them for building on this side of the board, and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Also, the turns are fairly fast, too, uh, which is a big bonus. You're taking three actions. One of them is mandatory, so you're always drawing a card, so you're always refilling your hand back up. But if you're just drawing two other cards in your turn, I mean, that's going to take you five seconds, and it's the next player's turn, which means the game obviously is very fast in that yeah. way. Yeah, it's fast, and when you take those actions, there's going to be turns where you basically just draw cards. Like, if you had a big turn, you're probably going to be just grabbing some resources next time. But once you get your income up, it's hard to not want to do that 
almost every time, right? Because mm -hmm. you have the money. You may as right. well spend it on your turn if you can. But when you're collecting those resources, it kind of makes it scary until it comes all the way around because whatever you're going to plan to do with it might not be there because these buildings are super limited. And there's times where you're collecting the resources and then sure enough, there's only one of that type of building left. Gets over to Kira, she builds it. And then I kind of have to replan and say, well, I'm going to build this thing. But then that might be a bigger building. It might give me more income. <laughs> but it's also gonna have more costly terraces to build. And if you weren't sure, I'm not sure we went over this at the very beginning, but the way the game scores at the end is that each of the buildings that you build onto the board have their own inherent victory points attached to them. So free trees are worth two points, whereas the larger buildings are worth eight or 12 points. Plus the number of terraces you build, you're gonna look on that row and then whatever the furthest spot that is available is the point you're going to score there. Obviously these majority cards, which we already mentioned, are gonna score in very different ways for whichever ones that are used. And then all those objective cards, like Ryan had 15 points sitting over there from yeah. the objectives that you were able to meet. So you score points from that as well. Not to mention negative points for objective yeah. cards that you had personally that you didn't achieve. And I had one that seemed easy at the beginning, uh, but then once we got into it, I barely missed this. I needed to have three terraces in each quarter of the board. Oh, That's why I was trying to build more right there on that last turn, but it did not happen for me. So that is Dinner in Paris. It's from a brand new publisher. This one is called Funny Fox. It's two to four players. If you guys have any questions at all about the game, please make them in the comments below. And thank you always for watching. Bye-bye.